Hey guys, Levelcap here, and today I want to talk to you about my favorite moments and reveals from Gamescom 2016. Let's kick things off with Star Citizen and the Planetary Landing demo. This crowdfunded juggernaut continues to grow because it continues to demonstrate that it can actually do what it promises. And at Gamescom, they demonstrated a planetary landing sequence that put games like No Man's Sky to shame. During the presentation, we got to see a multi-crew spaceship with two persons on board take the craft from traveling around space stations and bring it in for a planet-side landing. The process was 100% seamless with no loading screens and the details are simply mind-blowing. Not only were the players able to land anywhere on the giant planet, which involved getting out and walking around, but they can also travel to highly detailed outposts. The outpost fidelity and interior detailing rivaled even the best looking single player games, but while in the outpost, the entire external world was still visible and interactable as it was demonstrated when the spacecraft continued to track the player inside the base and he was able to see the spacecraft outside of the base. Chris Roberts alluded to the fact that programming this was no easy feat and that they are still optimizing it, but in its current state, it's still one of the greatest technological feats we've seen in a video game for quite some time. And before we move on to the next game, if you're actually interested in Star Citizen and you wanna sign up for a new account, if you use my referral code, you'll actually get some bonus credits and you'll help me get some cool swag. Now switching it up to mainstream game news, Overwatch had one hell of a show. Not only did they put on a highly entertaining Overwatch tournament with a $100,000 prize pool, but they also released an incredible animated short for the character Bastion. Blizzard has always delivered with their cinematics, but this one really took it to a new level with Pixar-like storytelling. By the time it was over, I was sitting there thinking, I'm ready to watch a feature-length version of that story. In addition to all that, they also revealed their new map, Eichenwald. This map takes our players through an old city and up to a dilapidated castle. Not only does it look beautiful, but it may also bring certain elements of verticality that we haven't seen in Overwatch yet. Now during all this, season one of Overwatch also concluded, so players got their awards and stuff like that, and they also detailed uh, what's going on for season two, which is gonna be a huge change up for the way that competitive Overwatch is played, how players are ranked, and what the rewards are. I think they're all really good changes, really big changes, and season two is gonna be a lot better than season one. The only downside is that competitive season two starts on September 6th, and until then, I'm not really interested in playing casual, and I've seen a lot from my friends as well. It was kind of foolish on Blizzard's part to shut down their most popular game mode for a period of three weeks. Now, of course, there was a small Battlefield event going on at Gamescom as well, one that I was fortunate enough to be a part of. During the stream, EA revealed the new desert map that was teased in the recent trailer. Sinai Desert is easily one of the best looking desert maps I have seen in an FPS. The weather effects on Parasol Storm were certainly striking back in Battlefield 4, but the sandstorm of Sinai feels completely immersive. Making out an enemy 30 feet in front of you feels like you're looking through a cloud of sand rather than just a tan colored fog filter like it did in Battlefield 4's remake of Gulf of Oman. Battlefield 1 is honestly on a whole other level compared to Battlefield 4 when it comes to visuals. But maybe even more impressive is just how incredible Battlefield 1 sounds. It blows me away just how much fidelity DICE has managed to squeeze into every aspect of Battlefield 1. Guns all sound like real guns, the vehicles sound more monstrous than ever, and the environments sound alive. What makes the sound really impressive is just how complete it feels. In Battlefield 1, I don't hear any of those lulls or gaps in the audio like you do in most games where certain effects loop or end for no reason. Because of how the game sounds, things like sandstorms go from just visually interesting gameplay elements to an immersive experience that makes you feel like your actual senses are being impaired. You can barely see in the sandstorm, which makes everything feel louder and stand out more. The fact that the sounds hold up when I'm paying so much attention to them, I think really says a lot about just how good they are. Now I did an overview of all the new weapons and vehicles in the new Gamescom build of Battlefield 1, so if you wanna know more about what to expect in the upcoming beta, be sure to check out those videos. DICE announced the open beta begins August 31st, 
first, so prepare to get your battlefield on. The other EA game that had a big showing at Gamescom was Titanfall 2, and although they really pulled out the red carpet for the game stream, the reactions were mixed. Titanfall no longer has that new kid on the block appeal. The fans remember how short-lived the original game was, so now the developers are faced with overcoming gamer skepticism. And shortly after the live stream, Respawn opened up the tech test to console gamers. If you missed it last weekend, you might be able to catch it this weekend. Again, the tech test feelings are quite mixed, with a lot of veterans claiming the game has lost that Titanfall feeling that they love so much. Then again, the game wasn't able to retain its audience, so maybe Respawn is aiming for something else entirely. Certainly, the single player element will add a much needed layer of depth to the Titanfall universe. Now, a game that's already had a ton of depth and character, Dishonored 2, had a lot of new gameplay and information released at Gamescom. The developers spent a lot of time explaining how which character you play impacts the gameplay, as well as demoed new areas that have only been shown in pre-rendered trailers. Considering they built their own engine to develop Dishonored 2, I think we can expect a pretty incredible game. These developers are super committed to making it the best game it can possibly be. They've also addressed concerns about the original game being a bit too easy by including the option to play Dishonored 2 without Corvo, or Emily's supernatural powers. Pretty much every aspect of the game has been deepened and enhanced. The ending system alone has gone from good to bad to a four stage system with each stage having several variations. In the end, I'm really looking forward to Dishonored 2. The first game was certainly fantastic, but I think the new one is going to be the kind of innovative title that we'll be talking about for years to come. Now, games with complicated stories are great and all, but what about some good old alien ass-kicking action? Well, Gears of War 4 is looking pretty damn fun. I wouldn't be as excited for it if it weren't coming to PC, though. The gameplay trailer Microsoft released for Gears 4 at Gamescom was recorded in 4K on a PC running on a GTX 1080, and it looked incredible compared to the previous Gears games. I think there's still plenty to be worried about with Microsoft's PC ports, but if Gamescom footage is anything to go by, at least one mission will run well. Resident Evil 7 also had some interesting looking footage released at Gamescom. The new trailer features footage from an in-game tape that the player will watch as they advance the main story. Whether Resident Evil 7's actual gameplay will mirror the footage or the demo they released at E3 is still unclear, but what is clear is that Capcom is taking the series back to its roots as a more methodical horror game. I expect that there will be plenty of action and shooting happening in Resident Evil 7, but I don't think it'll be nearly as over the top and arcadey as Resident Evil 6 was. Resident Evil is one of those franchises which feels like it's hit a wall with creativity that it hasn't been able to get back away from or find a way around. Fans of the franchise have expressed a lot of concern that the new game doesn't really look like a Resident Evil game, but I don't think anything could be further from the truth. The first few Resident Evil games were puzzle games that took place in spooky mansions, much like the horror games that were popular in the mid-90s. There's a balance Capcom needs to strike between old and new gameplay for sure to keep Resident Evil feeling intuitive and fresh to modern gamers, but what they've released so far seems very promising, at least an old fogey like me. Lastly, Ubisoft have a release date for their upcoming virtual reality Star Trek game, Bridge Crew. The social VR game that puts you on the bridge of a Star Trek ship is set to launch November 29th on the Oculus Rift, HTC Vive, and the PlayStation VR. Aside from nerding out about finally fulfilling my dream of sitting on the captain's chair of a Star Trek spaceship, Bridge Crew looks like one of the first VR multiplayer titles that really has something unique to offer and fits the hardware running it. Most of the VR titles I've seen so far have really just been extensions of existing games. Bridge Crew, however, looks like it's one of the first bigger VR titles that's actually built to make use of the virtual space that it puts you in. The graphics certainly leave something to be desired, and I doubt it's gonna be that impressive to watch as a YouTube video, but the immersion experience and being able to yell fire the photon torpedoes to my buddy who's sitting next to me is certainly going to make up for it. Now those are certainly my top picks or highlights from Gamescom. Of course if you're into Call of Duty there was the new Infinite Warfare Zombies in Spaceland trailer which just seems insane. And then there's the Metal Gear Survive trailer which looks overblown and crazy but if you're a Metal Gear fan that's probably going to excite you. And then there was the Destiny Rise of Iron Forged in Fire video 
video documentary, which has got tons of details on the new Destiny expansion, if that floats your boat. Anyway, that kind of wraps it up for what I think of Gamescom 2016. What did you guys like the most? What are you looking forward to the most? Let me know in the comments section, and as always, I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.